Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you respectfully to let's stand before the Lord as we are going to read the scripture this morning. We'll start in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 19 and we'll read all the way through chapter 2 verse 11. A little longer uh, reading, but as we read the scriptures, let us remember that we worship even when we read the scriptures. Amen? So let's worship the Lord by reading the scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 19, as it follows. They rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord. Then they went back to the house of Ra at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son and she called his name Samuel for she said I have asked for him from the Lord the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the early the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow but Hannah did not go up for she said to her husband as soon as the child is weaned I will bring him so that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and dwell there forever Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and she brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. And the child was young, then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, Oh, my Lord, as you, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who was standing here in your presence praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition and I made that I made to him. Therefore I have lent him, lent him to the Lord as long as he lives. He is lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. And Hannah prayed and said, my heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, for the feeble bind on strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry, they cease to hunger. The barren has borne seven, but she, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and on them he has set the world he will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might shall a man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Against them he will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king to exalt the horn of his anointed. Then Elkanah went home to Ramah, and the boy was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, the priest. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed Bethesda Church and those of you who are watching with us and participating in the worship via internet. Today is a special day here at Bethesda Church. Not only that we glorify the giver of life the only true God who deserves all the glory all the honor all the worship 
Today we also honor the channels through which God gives life, the mothers. And my message this morning is a, a message for mothers, but not only. I believe the Lord has a word for all of us, but also for the young folks, for those who are mothered, those who were brought into this world by mothers and taken care of by mothers and grandmothers. You've heard the story of Hannah, and we are well known, uh, we know very well this story because it's been many times preached from this particular passage. Hannah was the first wife of two wives of Elkanah, but unfortunately she was barren. Tanina, the uh, second wife of uh, this man, had children. As you probably know or you heard, if not, I'm telling you right now, especially in the Old Testament, a barren woman was perceived as cursed, as not blessed, as, and it was a shame attached to be a barren woman. It's not so nowadays. Thank God it's not so. But it's still that instinct of all mothers, all women, all wives desire to have a child. And 3,000 years ago, this woman, also the Bible tells us that Panina was not a nice lady. She kept poking her eyes. I'm a mother, you're not. And she was filled with shame and maybe guilt. And she was praying. She was a woman of faith, a woman of prayer. And we know that she prayed to the Lord, to the God of Israel, to Yahweh. She fasted. She even went to the tabernacle. It was before, prior to the temple. She went to the tabernacle and there was the high priest Eli. And she was there before the, the Lord, pouring out her heart, her sadness. But desiring, Lord, give me a child. Make me a mother. I want to bless my husband with a child, with a son. But she was crying out in her heart. She wasn't one of us. I mean, I'm one of them that, you know, you can hear me sometimes. My wife says, babe, can you just slow down a little bit when you pray so other people can pray around you? She's right. Sometimes I get, you know. But she was crying loud in her heart but she was just barely moving her lips and Eli the priest is looking at her and erroneously thinks that this woman is drunk she's got more than 0.08 alcohol in her blood that's the limit you know in Michigan and he's talking to her, woman, stop being a fool. Go home. And we know that she's saying to him, my Lord, it's my heart that's heavy. Don't consider me a woman like you think. I'm just saddened. I'm full with sorrow. I'm pouring my heart to the Lord the, the best I can, knowing that God is a God who hears, knowing that He is alive, knowing that He can intervene in my situation. And then Eli, the high priest, steps back and says, I'm sorry. I just put some words in his mouth. 
He said, may the Lord whom you praying that he will listen to you, will hear your cry, will hear your prayers, and the Lord will bless you with children. And God heard her and answered her prayers. And I say, Lord, please hear the prayers of all mothers. God heard the prayers of my mother, as I said it at the time of prayer. Mothers of Bethesda, let me tell you, God hears you. God hears your cry. God hears your prayers. Hannah was a godly mother, and as we celebrate today, Mother's Day, this morning, we're going to look at three encouraging thoughts concerning mothers, godly mothers, because although she lived 3,000 years ago, I believe she remains a strong model, a strong example for 21st century Christian mothers. She's a model of devotion of a godly woman. And first thing we'd like to, to observe, especially from her prayer, from her ode for her song, from Hannah's song, which is, a, which is a prayer, is we need to observe that Hannah personally knew God as her Savior. It's in my heart, verse 1 and 2 from chapter 2, verse 1, my heart exalts in the Lord, my horn is exalted in the Lord, my mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. First and foremost, Dear mothers and mothers-to-be, a godly woman, a godly mother acknowledges God as her personal Savior. You have to have that intimate relationship with the Creator. You place your faith in God who is the Lord and you acknowledge and recognize him as your savior. You know that when she says the Lord is the horn, in, that, in those times the horn was a symbol of strength and power. She knew that all of her strength comes from the Lord. F comes from her intimate connection with God. From nothing else from no other relationships. And this is what I even tell young wives. Don't expect, don't ever ex expect that your husband will fulfill all of your needs. Your husband will fulfill some of your needs. But the most important needs that a wife or a husband has will be fulfilled only and only by God. That's why our most import, important, the most principal, the highest relationship has to be not with our wife or spouse or children. has to be with the Lord. And this woman, Hannah, she declares the first thing you are the Lord of my salvation. I exalt, I rejoice in your salvation. Because that's the source of your strength, of my strength, of any human being's strength. And she paid attention to her relationship with her God. Secondly, in verse 2, there's none holy like the Lord for there is none besides you there is no rock like our God and I recognized God's holiness she knew that there is no comparison between God and any of the creatures no matter how much you, lo you love your wife or husband or children 
or how much you respect your pastor or elders or spiritual leader. There's no comparison. God is the holy God and none like him. She had her priorities clearly stated. God and no one is no one like you. There's no one in the same category. I cannot place anybody in the same category with you because you are holy. You are holy. She worshiped God and loved her children. Attention. This is a trap sometimes for us parents and maybe more mothers. We talk about mothers, right? Some of us parents, mothers, fathers, sometimes we change that position. We have to worship God and love our children. Sometimes we worship our children and love God. It's a very important distinction to make. We worship God and God only. Let's not fall into the temptation of idolizing our children and place them on the same level or higher than the level of God in our lives. God is always faithful. No one is a rock like God is. Amen? Thirdly, she also recognized the Lord's sovereignty. And verses 3 to 8, she goes into declaring that God is a God of all knowledge. Verse 3. The, the, bows, the bows of the mighty are broken. He's almighty, all knowledgeable. He kills and brings to life. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He raises up the poor from the dust. He is the sovereign God. He does everything he wants to do in heaven and on this earth. And no one is like God. Hannah recognizes and acknowledges the sovereignty of God. That he has all the power, all the will, what he wants to become a reality, he will bring it into reality. He is supreme over all circumstances of life. Isn't it true that many times uh, we talk with pride about our children and our grandchildren? We're so glad we are just, you know, our lives exude with, with, with joy and even pride. We say, well, we know we, we're pride in the Lord when we see our children and our young people in the house of the Lord. Serving, ministering, singing, being at the, at the youth meetings and in all activities. Let me tell you something. I praise God that all of our four children, our four girls, are in the house of the Lord. But no one can take credit. Hello? No one can boast, oh, my children, oh, I'm such a good parent. Give praise to the Lord that your children are in the house of the Lord. But don't take credit. Give all the credit to God. He's the sovereign. I will explain. I will have a, a, a second part of my message. No one, no one should brag about how good their children are. It's only, say with me, is God's grace. Is God's grace. No one should look down on another brother or sister when their children are not as good as mine. No. We should pray for one another. And I recognized God's almighty power and authority. And the last verse says that 
after she dedicated Samuel to the Lord, brought him to be raised and to minister at the house of the Lord. We are told in verse 11, and the boy was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli the priest. Praise God. Samuel responded very good to all of the godliness and prayers of his mother and father. He responded in a positive way to the instructions of the priest and all the things that he was taught and instructed in the Lord at the house of the Lord. Praise God, Samuel responded well. But is that a guarantee? Now that we speak on Mother's Day, that all the children that we bring before the Lord, because all parents bring their children to dedicate them to the Lord in the house of the Lord, right? At the six weeks, eight weeks, what have you. And we bring them on our arms and we pray over them. We call the name of the Lord over our children. And then we start the instruction the long nights, the long days, the long years, going from infant to toddler to preschooler to middle schooler and high schooler and college. And we keep investing as parents. We thank God that Samuel responded well, but Zechariah 4, 6, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It's God's grace, it's God's power. But does that always happen? Is that always true? How many among us, because I know quite a few, parents, mothers, there are godly prayer warriors instructing their children for many years, as you know, I was the Sunday school director here at Bethesda. Some of the best children that got the prize number one, prize number two, they were best in memorizing scripture. Good family support, parents that loved them and expressed their love and compassion and geared them into the Lord and did everything in that power, and still when they hit the teenagers, teenage, and they became adults, young adults, they turned their backs on God, on the church, and on the family, especially on their mothers and fathers. I know several. Do you know some? So that's the first thought that as mothers and parents, we need to invest in our children no matter what, day and night. We do our part. We do everything that we can. First and foremost, we have to model our Christianity to our kids. They have to see in me as a father, to see in you as a mother, as a father, as a parent. They need to see Christianity alive they have to see in us as parents that Jesus is our personal savior that we have a daily relationship a live relationship with the with the divinity with the savior they have to see us that we we exalting him we give him all the glory and we worship him and we read the scripture we teach him how to pray we model before their eyes not when they are 17 when they are seven days 17 months seven years old we do everything we can to invest in them the values of the kingdom we teach them respect. We teach them forgiveness. We teach them love. But we exemplify, we model before their eyes the kingdom's living. Amen? That's the first thought. 
to be a godly mother and to devote your time, your efforts, your, your everything in investing in your children. But the second thought that I would like to spend the next 15 minutes is the response to a godly mother. And the sad things is that they don't always go hand in hand. It was great that Hannah and her devotion and other mothers and thousands and millions of mothers like Hannah, they showed before their children and they were able to, to raise a Samuel. But it's also possible that she might raise a Samson. We know from the scripture that Samson's parents were equally devoted to God. They were godly. They loved the Lord. And the situation was so similar. Samson's wife also was not only that she was a devoted woman, a godly woman, she was also barren. And she asked that God would bless her with a son. And God blessed her. And I, I have absolutely no doubt that exactly like Hannah, Samson's uh, mother, we don't have her name, devoted herself, teaching her son in the same manner, taught him about God. And when Samson reached adulthood, he took it in the opposite way than Samuel. Samson responded differently to his godly mother, totally in the opposite way as Samuel did. He disobeyed God's will in whom he married. He repeatedly broke God's law. Samson repeatedly broke his mother's heart, his parents' heart. He was rebellious. And for all the humble obedience that Samuel showed in his life, in the opposite way, Samson showed even more selfish rebellion. They both came from devoted godly mothers. And why is that? Because God did not make us robots. God endowed us with free will. The way we respond to the same type of parenting, two children can respond in the opposite way. From the same set of mother and father, you can have two brothers, then go, one goes to the left and go, one goes to the right. But this does not absolve us as parents to continually, mothers continually, as I said to the prayer this morning, never stop praying. Never stop praying to God for your rebellious daughter, rebellious son. Can we blame those parents? Stop and think. Who was the father of Adam and Eve? Who? God. And he's our heavenly father, right? He raised them. He taught them. God revealed himself into the Garden of Eden to, them, to those first couple to his son and daughter. Can we blame God? I think he was the best father that can be, right? And still, his children, Adam and Eve, turn their backs onto God. In your face, rebellion. Let's not blame anybody. We have an enemy. You cannot go to war, spiritual war, without a strong, prayerful life. Without prayer in this world, we will just all fall apart. Yes, the devil might have his first victory against your son or daughter. Your son and daughter maybe is right now in the world 
turn his back onto God and church and you as a mother and father, do not despair. Keep on, keep on praying. Keep on and keep on crying to God. What happened is we know very well with uh, Samson after towards the end of his life he fell in love with Delilah and Delilah extracted from him the secret of how God was working through him despite of his rebellion and Delilah cut his hair. Samson thought that the strength was his but the strength was the Lord's. And the Philistines chain him to those pillars that were sustaining that place where they were gathering and they were now ready to make fun of him to have a good, good time and mocking that warrior of God. What happened there? When he saw himself humbled, despised, enchained, probably naked, and the people of Philistines were mocking on him. He came back to his senses. The prayers of his mother and father reached him when he was in the pit of despair. And there in the last moment of his life, he remembered the God of his parents. And he cried out, God, have mercy on me. Forgive me. Give me one more time the power that I used to have. And God remembered him in his anguish. God met him when he repented. And God gave him back the power that he used to have. And God glorified and magnified his name through Samson before he took his last breath. His mother's prayers were heard and God came down and met Samson in his moments of repentance. I remember as a young man, my mom was the only parent that I have that knew God at that time. I was as rebellious as someone can be, entangled in all of these traps of life. But my mom never, ever stopped crying to the Lord. I remember my beloved young folks, I'm talking to you now. I remember going to the discotheques and fighting and whatever and the prayers of my mother were protecting me even when I was a rebellious young man. I remember going in fights and my buddies, my friends were hit with, with boxers and they were just hit in the jaws and broken jaws and I got a couple fists, but never a broken bone. We were drunk and we tried to cross a very big, artery, uh, big road, an uh, important road in Oradia, and a drunker, not drunker because we came all from a concert. We were three or four of us, and I was in the middle, and the car hit the two on my left side and the one on my right side, I don't know how I didn't get hit because the mother's prayer would have been with me even in my rebellious times. Young folks that you are hearing my message this morning is the message of the love of God, the heart of God. Your, the prayers of your mother are following you everywhere you go. The prayers of your mother and father are reaching wherever you go in the deepest of the pit. 
You don't want to have an ending like Samson. Because if you will continue in your rebellious heart, thank God, before I turned 21 after my military service, I turned my heart to God. But if you will continue in your rebellion against God, God will reach you. In the meantime, he will continue to offer you chance after chance to say yes to God. But if you don't, if you keep refusing God's mercy and grace and forgiveness to you, will t- come a time, will come a time when you will be in the, the deepest and the darkest moment of your life. You may be in the last moments of your life and God will reach you even there to offer you life, to offer you the eternal life. But why wait? Why stay in a rebellious, with a rebellious heart in a state of rebellion against God until the last moment? Why don't you want to bring the gifts that God placed in your heart and serve God with all the passion and power and everything that he gave you instead of serving the darkness, serving the evil one? Mothers never stop, never stop praying. But if you today are here and you hear the whisper of the Spirit of God, come back, my son, my daughter, come back to me. This is the day that the Lord has made for you and prepare another chance for you to turn around, do 180 degrees. That's what repentance means, a metanoia, a change of mind, a change of purpose, directions, and goals in life. And come back to God. Receive life. And live life with Christ Jesus. Let's stand before the Lord. At this time, I want to offer all of you, those who may be, turn your backs unto God. And it just happened maybe to come to this Mother's Day service because you say, oh, I'm going to respect mom's wish, I'm going to be here. Or maybe you live a life that is half with the world and half in the church. If you are back, backsliding in your life, today is a day when the Lord, the Bible calls God also as a mother. Because he loves us like a mother, like a hen that wants to gather all of her chicks under her wings. God wants you back. Your father, your heavenly father wants you back. And all of us, let's pray for those mothers and fathers again who have prodigals in their lives, sons and daughters that are rebellious in their heart, that the Lord will continue to pursue them and to sue them back, to bring them back. Let all of us pray and then thank, bring thanks to the Lord for this morning, for everything that God has blessed us with, with prayer, prophetic words, worship, and the word of God. Let us all pray. In the meantime, if you want to come and see me at the end of the service, you want to talk to me, Talk to us. We want to pray for you that the Lord will strengthen your faith and come back like that prodigal son that came to his father and said, Father, I have sinned against the heaven and I have sinned against you, but I want to come back. I'm ashamed. Come because the Father in heaven loves you. Come, because your father and mother can wait for that moment. And you will be blessed. And you will be honored by God. Let us pray and then bring thanks to the Lord in prayer.